Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Abundance Tree Podcast. I'm your host, Janice Luke, and I'm here with my co-host and very good friend, and April. April. April Dupree. How yes. are you? I'm doing good, but I understand that you're kind of under the weather a little bit. Yes. <laughs> my apologies in advance. My energy is on low today. It's something, one of these bugs. Y'all know it's so many in the season change, y'all. It got me, but the show must go on. I am yeah. here, um, blessed, and um, just... If I'm a little off, y'all, if I go off screen for a hot second, give me grace. I'll be right back. <laughs> we certainly will. But you you do look nice. You can't even tell. So you do look nice, though, <laughs> today. <laughs> as always. Yeah, as always. I was going to agree with that. So. <laughs> but <Okay>. anyway, <laughs> we have a great guest tonight. So tell us about who we have. Oh, we really do. Um, So we have a trailblazing entrepreneur specializing in AI-driven process improvement. She's the founder of PMO Boss and helps busy entrepreneurs implement AI solutions with focus and clarity. Her journey into entrepreneurship was sparked by a pivotal moment during the COVID-19 when she bravely said yes to a summit to a summiting Mount Kilimanjaro. I'll, I'll have to get some more details about that. So join us as we explore her inspiring journey of resilience, growth, and purpose-driven entrepreneurship. We have Miss Laura Bowers. Yeah. I am loving this Women in Tech for Women's History Month. Let's go. That's right. Yes. <laughs> That's so awesome. Very awesome. There she is. Hey, Laura. Hi, Laura. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Saying how excited we are to see women in tech. I know, right? <laughs> it's it's rare. It, it shouldn't be. <laughs> right, that's true. It shouldn't be rare, but that's so awesome. So tell us more about your journey and this PMO boss and everything, all the things. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a journey and certainly not a straight line by any means. Um, <laughs> but I, I think like a lot of people um, with COVID hit, it was like a time of personal reckoning. Um, I've been in IT for a really long time and I was doing IT program management uh, for the National Institutes of Health at that time. And when COVID hit, we got slammed, right? IT, the demand on IT went up. So a lot of people were kind of retreating home and everything was changing for everyone. Um, but my work hours just, I mean, it was bananas what we had to do and respond to and uh, round the clock. I mean, uh, I don't want to compare to like uh, health workers because that was like much, you know, more intense, but we were a couple steps down from that of just kind of like this relentless need. Um, and my kids were really young then. They were, I want to say two and five going into COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was like potty training and trying to do kindergarten on Zoom. I mean, it's it's the most honestly, just yeah. ridiculous concept <laughs> to, yeah. to try to accomplish that. Um, and I had some real tough moments of reflection where I was just like, how the hell did we get here? Like, I'm just on meetings and, you know, chasing after diapers. And I was like, whoa. Um, so yeah, so I really realized that like, I wasn't like living a joyful, fun life. It was a very um, routine just pre predetermined um, path. And I was just like, is this it? Is this really it? Uh, so I think um, <laughs> Facebook can like read our minds, right? There's the algorithms and all that wonderful stuff. So an ad popped up in my Facebook feed, um, which essentially said like, are you living your best life? And I'm like, nope, no, I'm not, absolutely not. And it ended up being for a leadership program that um, it was six months of like coaching and looking personal development. And it culminated with climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania. And wow. I was just like, I had never really hiked before. I mean, like prior to that, my biggest hike was probably a Girl Scout level hike. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, didn't have hiking boots, none of that stuff. So I got on the phone with the people because I was like, well, let me budget for it. Let me see what this is all about. Um, and I was just completely sold. It was, it was just this whole awakening of like doing something for myself, bringing adventure back in my life and taking the time to figure out what I want. Um, so I piecemealed all my credit cards together because this was not something I had budgeted for. And uh, I went for it. And that kind of, you know, jump started a lot of this transition. Wow, that is so awesome. I definitely remember the 
the Coco days, <laughs> the the uh, Coco Rona. That's what I call it, the the crazy Coco. But <laughs> because I'm a teacher too, so I I really can relate to when you said the you know the Zoom calls with kindergartners. But I had the Zoom calls with the high school students, you know. But uh, so and it was a tough time. It really was. Um, but that's so awesome how you just responded to a Facebook ad and you're climbing mountains. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know? literally. Wow. Yeah, li quite literally. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. It really well, is. So that when the shift began and it kind of prompted you, like, was it entrepreneurial centered? Yeah. So it was, I, they targeted leaders in general, and I had been in leadership positions in my career. So I was a program manager running a team of about 60 people. Um, so that aligned for me. Uh, but what once I got into it, the program was really more about leading your own life and being the leader you want to be in life. Right. And there was a lot of exercises around what are your values? What does your perfect life look like? And then, you know, looking at that gap of where it is today and what you would actually want it to be and then starting to make the steps and changes to get there. Um, and one of the huge realizations, uh, which I was probably already feeling, but was much more confronted with was how happy, unhappy I was with a nine to five job. And like just the commitment to somebody else's schedule, to somebody else's vision. And even though I was in a, a senior level position, I wasn't working for myself, right? I still had to answer to uh, my client and my, my company boss, which I love my company, but my client wasn't so great. <laughs> so, you know, that, that could cause um, just a lot of frustration to like really work your ass off. And I was very good at what I did. And it was uh, felt underappreciated many times. And I was just kind of like, all right, well, if I'm going to be working this hard, I'm going to do it for myself. Um, so I slowly, you know, got to the point where I made the decision. And I, um, I had a natural break because the contract I was on was coming to an end. Um, so I kind of worked through a you know, a variety of dramatic contracting things to kind of tie that up because I didn't want to leave prematurely. Um, but when it ended, I was like, all right, we're jumping in. And that's when I um, decided to just pursue my company. And that was last June was when that happened. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. It's almost your one year anniversary. It is. Yeah. And it has been, uh, the, I don't, I don't even know what the word is, but um, the most full year of my life, right? Like what I've learned, like leading up to it, I was stuck right? The things I was doing, I was on autopilot. I wasn't really challenged. I was really more frustrated and stressed than, than any other feeling. And since then, um, I opened up my business wanting to go into project management consulting because that was my area of expertise. So I was like, all right, we'll just keep rolling with that and cut out the middleman essentially and make it a more profitable endeavor for me. Um, but as I got out there and I was using AI myself because AI was ramping up the same time I was pivoting into the work, well, the entrepreneurial workforce, um, I just decided to latch on to the AI stuff and I started going in really deep with learning about it, how to use it, understand it, the ethics, uh, the legalities of it. And then that's when I kind of even switched again. So like more pivots, <laughs> deciding to focus on AI consulting and helping people embrace AI in ethical ways into their business, because really we just want to save time. Like there's such an opportunity here. Like AI is a little scary. There's scary parts about it. But for the everyday person that operates with integrity, like you can very easily use this technology to get your time back and start using it to be with your family, to have the connections, to go on the more vacations. Like we don't have to work 12 hour days. Like it doesn't have to be like that. And that's unfortunately what you see a lot in, in corporate America. Right. Like you said, I think it's a lot of autopilot, a lot of conditioning, a lot mm -hmm. of, um, value in this struggle that you really don't have to struggle and it's more emphasis put on working harder than smarter you know what I mean right. and I think there's a a really big shift um with the new generation coming in they're just like why would I work harder when I could work smarter <laughs> <laughs> right. and it's making so much sense for all of us like the whole um putting time in that is commensurate with your money like if you want more money you put more time you do more hours you get a second job and then you're just so consumed, you can't do anything. And you are on that autopilot. It's a really hard thing to break away from. So I'm so happy you got out of it and in a much better space. Um, I, I think it's so much healthier. Um, mm -hmm. 
And and we have a saying here too, there's power in the pivot, girl. There is power in the pivot. Yeah. It is uncomfortable. It will drive you crazy. It's frustrating yeah. like in that actual moment. Mm -hmm. But I really do feel like it leads you closer to your purpose. Like once you kind of embrace it and really sit down and kind of look around, you know, it's just it's usually always like a sequential chain of events that leads you into a better place. And I, you know, I've learned to love the pivot. It's because yeah. <laughs> I pivot a few times. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. So like, uh, talk more about the AI. Like, what is it like? I know, because we've all heard like a chat GPT, you know, mm -hmm. mid journey, all these things are throwing out, you're hearing about, are there any specific tools you, you're embracing? Or is it just in general, like everything? Or like, yeah, how are so you using it? It's a little bit of everything. So I, I keep an eye on the news and I'm involved in different educational programs and communities so I can kind of like stay abreast of what's happening. Mm -hmm. um, it is moving so fast. And a lot of these companies, like they pop up and they fail or they pop up and they get bought out. Like it's it's a very fast moving industry. Uh, so what I like to try to do is focus on some of the front runners. So there's this one particular community I'm part of where we just, we kind of focus on the industry leaders, right? What is the best tool for AI audio? What is the best tool for images? But even more specifically, like if you're looking for consistency in images, which one of these tools is going to be the right one or how do you get there? So there's a lot of nuance in it. And there are so many tools that I also try to focus on the low cost or no cost stuff. Um, which I am primarily on chat GPT just because that's the they they were the one that started this right they came out at the end of 2022 with the um, you know open availability of it you could have a free account and you could have access um, since then there's I mean the the different AI models are coming out you know the speed is crazy. I mean, Meta has one, Amazon has one, Microsoft has one, even though Microsoft funds open AI, they have their own. <laughs> like, right. so it's, it's, it's insane to see all the different ones coming out, but they do all serve different purposes a little bit. And this, it does start to get nuanced. Like the different AI brains, if you will, um, have different personalities, just like every human does. So based on whatever they're trained on, it's going to kind of give you a more analytical mind, a more creative mind, a more, you know, fact base, whatever it is um, that their data sources came from, which are under much contention. There's a lot of lawsuits about where the data that they that these models are being trained on comes from. And none of that has been tried through court. So like there's a lot of unknowns as to what's going to go on with this. But the reality is it's it's not going to go away. There's way too much money being spent, way too much money to be made, um, that it's not going to go back into Pandora's box. <laughs> and so right. I think it's really, really important. Um, for everyone, whether you like it or not, like you, you might be terrified of AI and think it's, you know, the worst thing to happen to humanity. But the fact of the matter is it's here. And I think the responsible thing to do is to understand it on some level so yeah. that even if you're not a fan of it and you don't want to use it, maybe, maybe that's possible, even though it's already permeated our culture so heavily. Because um, even before ChatGPT, there's plenty of AI in our lives, right? <laughs> um, but you have to, I think you have to understand it. You have to do some level of uh, education around it so you can understand how it might affect your job, how it might help your job. Like you don't have to be scared of necessarily losing it. Or maybe if you are one of those positions that's likely to go away over the course of the next couple of years or decade or whatever because of this, now's the time to start developing other skills. Like don't, you know, cover your eyes and pretend it's not happening. Absolutely. Um, and one example of that, I would say, I would say like the, the, the AI tools that are out there now for like websites and things of that nature. Cause I do have friends and close like family members as well that are, we're actually like building websites since like the nineties, like the dot com era. And, and they know how to really put it together, like WordPress websites, that kind of stuff. But now that you have these tools where you can, the website can, you just give it a prompt or, you know, you can even upload a, a website that you are inspires you. And then you can like, it'll just create recreate a whole website in minute or seconds actually so yeah. and so those are that's just one example but but i can understand why you would want to embrace that and maybe try to l use it to leverage your uh, uh, your creativity in a different way to maybe help people or uh, or try to understand it like as like such as what you're doing so but you're yeah. absolutely right it's not going away so it's like we got we have to do we have to embrace it so but, uh, and the climate is crazy out here like you were saying like there's so many random changes and uncharted territory 
and stuff is coming out every day. Yeah. <laughs> so it, is, it is, I think it's overwhelming for um, people, especially if they don't have like a good um, center about it and they already have like a negative outlook because they don't understand it or whatever. But um, how do you, like, what kind of services do you provide for people? Like if they're looking for a certain type of AI service or just in mm -hmm. general? Yeah, it's kind of two two core products or or groups that we're looking at. Um, it is kind of that entrepreneur, solopreneur, or maybe even the person that's at work that's unsure how this is going to affect them. Like they're just interested in AI, um, but maybe they have some hesitation or they have some fear around it. Um, and even if it's not as dramatic as fear, they just like don't know what direction to go in. Right? A lot of people will will tinker with ChatGPT but um, garbage in, garbage out. So like they'll play with it and they'll be like, eh, okay, well, it's fun, it's neat, it's whatever, but it's not helping me. Um, but there are ways to learn how to do the prompt engineering, which is what it's called when you um, submit queries into it and where you can get better products that are more in alignment with your voice. Um, so my company really focuses on ethical implementation of AI and making sure that like, one of the principles is like declaring when you're using AI, right? Like if you're using AI images, you say they're AI images. Like we, we don't have to pretend here or try to like trick people, um, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> right. so there, there's like no education on how to do deep fakes, right? Like that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to really just optimize tasks. Like um, for example, uh, things like um, writing letters of recommendation. Right. I've had some of my old um, employees ask me to do that for them. I can talk to, to ChatGPT like it's my assistant, because that's a very good way to think about it that I think makes people feel comfortable. Is like you're really kind of just talking to a person, right, inside of a little box. <laughs> but you tell them, like, you know, here's here's about this person. Here's what I liked. Here's the position they did for me. Here's the position they're going for. This is why I think they'd be good for it. Please write me a letter of recommendation. And it writes it. And like, you don't just send it off, you read it and you make sure that you're comfortable with it, with what it says. And you make sure that it's, you know, you can change words that don't sound right to you. Like there's plenty of times I've had it help me with emails, but I'm like, that just doesn't sound like me. And I change the sentences or the words that I need to, and then we move on. And I got something done in 30 minutes that, you know, some takes it take an hour or two, right. To really sit down and write a good letter. Um, so for those kind of things, I, I think it's great for any, like, person that's just trying to get more done, um, whether that be, you know, in their business or in their personal life. Another really good use case is like a lot of parents volunteer, right? They get sucked into these, these volunteer positions for scouts or for uh, just PTA. Who's got time for that? Now you can just use ChatGPT to like help with all that kind of stuff that is really important, but you don't want that bogging down your day. Like you don't want to be on the computer at 11 o'clock writing a PTA email. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, those are the kind of like, uh, I don't know what the right word it is. It's not really low value, but it's kind of like that low hanging fruit where yeah. AI is like the perfect solution because it's it's not crossing any kind of ethical boundaries as to whether or not, you know, it helps you write an email about a t-shirt drive, right? <laughs> so um, those kind of things are great. And then to finish answering your question, the other thing that we like to do is actually go into, um, companies and train their employees kind of on the basics. Like what is AI? What is the difference between all of these, these LLMs, the large language models and uh, what use cases do they have for their business that make sense and teach them how to prompt it so that the prompts are in alignment with the company vision and values and things like that. Um, so that's like a, you know, kind of like a half day training type thing on AI basics um, to let companies integrate it in ways that don't instill fear in their employees, but rather support their employees. Wow, that is so good. That's so powerful. Um, uh, it's, it's so cool how you can just help people be more comfortable with it. And like you said, you, you kind of show them like the ethic, how to do it in an ethical way. And I have mm -hmm. to say, full disclosure, we use AI for our podcast. <laughs> we do. We use for our captions on our reels and whatnot in our right. description. So, and exactly. I, we're proud of it. So, and we do, just like you say, we, we read through it and uh, make sure it sounds right and everything like that. But, but it's so good how you can, I can imagine that people are so much more comfortable after having a session or a training with you because mm -hmm. um, so that way they can be rest assured that they're using it in, a, in an ethical way. And, mm -hmm. and it actually helps the company and it, 
and helps them save a lot of time or helps the person, whoever wants to use it, save so much more time and get that time back. So that's, that's awesome. So those were some great gems of great, really practical ways of using it and thinking about it. So totally. that's awesome. So like, yeah. um, you can really identify from your struggle during COVID, just having to do 50 million and 11 things at one time by yourself. <laughs> and be in so many places so I feel like that gives you they gave you the grounding and then you know also you know Janice and I are fans of a good mentorship being in mm -hmm. rooms being around like-minded individuals so it was you know I really just feel like it was just meant almost you know when you saw that ad and it just kind of led you to walk in your purpose or whatever and even though that changed a couple of times like I respect that as well because you're doing something that means something to you and you can mm -hmm. also identify with your clients and say hey I get it <laughs> let me show you how to do this better so you don't you know like flicker out because COVID kicked me so hard girl it took mm -hmm. me like the whole 2021 I was like in the twilight zone like whoa what just happened for like 80 percent of the year like <laughs> mm -hmm. so I get it um and then it just it just changed so rapidly. And I think that the after effect of it still is affecting people for sure, you know? Yeah. I think it was just so much more of like, what do I actually want out of life? Right. Like what, what is like, not to get too like deep here, but it's like, what is the purpose? Like, am I just really supposed to work for decades and then have this small little window of retirement where I go back to enjoying my life? And hey. that's not what I want. I want to be part of my kids' lives now and I'm not opposed to the hard work. Like right now, this is a this is a hustle season, right? I'm building a company from the ground up. So it's not a calm time by any means, but the rewards are more directly correlated, right? My efforts are correlated with my rewards. And a couple of years from now, right? I'll start to really have built something with automation, with AI and have the right team in place where that freedom that I think so many people like dream of to have really for me, it's time freedom, right? Obviously I would love to have all the money in the world so that I can enjoy my time. But it's, it's this idea that I can just like get up and go grocery shopping when I need to. Right. And not like, Absolutely. not be trying to fit it into this window between seven and eight o'clock at night on a Tuesday. Right. <laughs> right. Absolutely. <laughs> the same way how I feel too. Like it, it's just the freedom of having your time. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just, it's so, it's so hard because, you know, you just, um, sometimes you just give, when you're giving all your time to your nine to five or whatever, it just takes so much out of you and you're so stressed and everything, but it's more like when you're doing it for yourself, it's so much more like purposeful. It's, your energy, it just feels different. And mm -hmm. it's so much more rewarding knowing that you're building something and, um, that you you have to remain patient in it as you're going through the journey though because a lot of people they start something and then they may not see the fruits of their efforts yet and so and then they might want to I mean, the pivot might be giving up and then starting a, something totally different which will just you know start and stop start and stop and then where are they getting so talk about that is there any burnout or did you ever like you know, burn out with your journey or did you ever like consider just quitting and stopping again how, how do you t get through that what can you tell yeah, it hasn't it hasn't really been burnout per se but i will say that like the little fear monster pops up every once in a while with the what the heck did i do like i, <laughs> I was in a, a well-paying position with health insurance and all these you know good perks um i've had to self-fund so you know my financial position today is very different than what it looked like when i was going into this and that can be really scary because i'm just burning through money as i am I'm trying to build this this business up um yeah. and it's uh, just full disclosure, because why not share with the internet, right? Like I didn't have a huge amount of savings. Like I, I'm actually leveraging my 401k, which is a risky move. Um, so it is really betting on myself to create a better retirement plan than what my 401k would have provided if I let it just sit there. Um, mm -hmm. And it is, it's, it's, it's scary, right? There's definitely parts of this where I'm like, okay, not making what I used to make, not making anything close to what I used to make. But at the same time, I, because I've done some of the personal development work, I do have a level of certainty that this is the path, like this is the greater outcome. So if I just push through this, you know, a little bit of a hard season, a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of the struggle bus, um, that, that is the only way I'll actually get to the vision that I want, right? If I, if I go back and get a job, that's fine, right? I can go do another W2 job to help me pay the bills for a little bit, but I'm not going to give up on this business because, 
this is what gets me the financial and time freedom, like having another, you know, W2 job. It's, it just doesn't get me there. Like, I don't see that path, right? Like, yeah, um, just working for the man. <laughs> it's just a lack yeah. of growth opportunity for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially as women, I hate to bring up the glass ceiling, but with any job, male or female, there's mm-hmm. only so high you're going to go at the job. Um, and there's, it's not guaranteed either. So um, I'd rather put my time into something that really is purposeful and meaningful to me, but it is scary because we got to pay bills, you know? <laughs> We all know what type of world we live in and um, entrepreneurs, we don't, until you really get, you know, scale and get like that level of consistency going, it's, um, it's real sporadic at first, you know, mm-hmm. like it's crazy and it is a lot of self-investing because I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat too, mm-hmm. um, but I'm not close enough to finish and to where I can just like fully like walk away. I really mm-hmm. do like how you also help people leverage their position too because uh you know I think that you can be happy and grow within your organization if you're in a good space but I also think that you know it it has a lot to do with the mindset Mm -hmm. you know it doesn't have to be miserable you know if you find help people find a better way to work it I I think that's also very lucrative as well yeah there's plenty of people that work in jobs they like with companies they like and the work's fulfilling and you know the meets their financial needs and that's that's a beautiful thing but it's like leveraging the technology so that they're they're not threatened it allows them to leave you know at four o'clock one right. day so they can get to the soccer game right where they don't have to stay till seven and this like you kind of said at the beginning this whole notion of we got to work hard and like why do we have to burn ourselves out to to show value why work 12 hours when you can do it in four right, right. <laughs> absolutely right. Right. make it make sense I, I i i wish we would get this um this four-day work week i swear i did <laughs> <laughs> let's go <laughs> oh my god <laughs> we've been talking about the last few days you know but <laughs> no because um, people are tired you can't really yeah. be productive when you're that tired and i really feel like that clouds your judgment you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and then the weekend boils down to like Tour. a lunch break <laughs> yeah it's like I spent an entire day you know cleaning right <laughs> so it was just like how does that that's not giving me any rest it's not really giving me time with my family so again it's just it goes back to my overwhelming commitment to create it right it's not going to be given to me by our current you know societal structure of how we operate and work so I'm gonna just have to go and create it I'm so right. proud of you girl you go girl yeah, that's, that's so awesome you. It is. That's so great. So I want to talk more about your mountain <laughs> that you yes. that you climbed. Yeah, you want to ask about that. <laughs> That's so that. awesome. Yeah, because I know yeah. I climbed a mountain when I was in college called Mount Baldy in in Glorieta, New Mexico, and that was like a mile up and a mile down. So that was that was quite the hike. So, but I'm sure it doesn't compare to your mountain. So, let again, how was that? Like you said, you you kind of found yourself or. Did, did it kind of give you like the strength? Hey, I can go out there and do what, you know, reach my goals or how, yeah. how was that experience? Uh, there is no denying that doing something like that is transformative. <laughs> like it's yeah. just a whole experience. I mean, just everything from just the flight of going there and it just, it's an expedition to even get to to Tanzania and, and Moshi where the town where we, we climb from. Um, but it was, I, I recommend everybody do it. And I know that sounds kind of crazy. Um, Kilimanjaro is a walk up mountain. So you don't need to have any technical mountain experience. So it is actually something that is not out of reach for most people, right? It's, um, I was not in any kind of physical shape for it. Like I, you know, it's, it was, uh, the, the principle is actually to go slow. So as long as you go slow, you acclimatize in a healthy, sustainable way, and you can get to the top. So it's like, from that perspective, it's, it is an attainable goal for anybody if you're interested. Um, wow, that's so powerful. Yeah. It was the experience, huh? It was. So once I got there, the group of people that I was doing the program with, uh, we had met um, in person for the first time in Tanzania. So it was a couple exceptions to that. But for the most part, that was our first, like everything else had been on Zoom. So we get to Tanzania, we meet, there's this, this huge bonding and it's a group of really cool people that, you know, we're all doing this same kind of journey. And then, you know, you go out on the mountain and they have um, guides and porters, which are required by law in Tanzania. They're, it's their tourism business, right? So you, there's a um, certain number that has to be with you. So it was our group of, I want to say about eight or nine of us in our group, but we went with, you know, 45 support 
team, right, of guides and, and porters that help us with our stuff in the mess tent and uh, the, the port potties and, the, you know, all the stuff, right? Um, so you're like this little community going up the mountain. And it's just a really cool thing because like a lot of them are learning English. Some of them speak English for the guide, the ones that are guides, but there's other training to be guides that are learning English and like they're singing the the local songs and you're eating, you know, a different, different diet while you're there. Um, so it's just, just it, from that, just that it's like, it's seven days. It's a seven day climb. So seven days on the mountain, four and a half up, two and a half down. And you're just, um, talking to people without technology for a whole week. <laughs> so in this day and age, like that is a, a unique experience, right? Just to be having deep conversations with people um, that you don't come by in your regular day to day. I mean, I was having two, three, four hour conversations with people <laughs> as we're, you know, navigating the mountain. So it was, the whole thing was just crazy. And then on top of that, you're doing like a, you know, significant physical feat and summiting a mountain. So you get to the top and you're just like, Oh my God. Right. So, and it's beautiful and all that stuff. You go through all these different climates. You started at the jungle and you ended in like snow. So it's, uh, the whole thing. Uh, I could really ramble about it for a while, but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. That, that is, is so cool. cool. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's so beautiful because it just mirrors like your, your, your entrepreneurial journey, like go slow and you see all the different climates and you know, experiences along the way, people you talk to, it's just, it just mirrors the whole thing that you just, you're going to get to the top. If you went through that experience, you, you could go slow through your journey, your entrepreneur journey, and you're going to get to the top, but just don't give up, you know, so that yeah. it is so beautiful how that, that parallels that. So yeah, thank you for that. I've never really like made that connection, but you're right. Yeah. Like I, you don't have to figure everything out fast, right? Take your time, right. enjoy the scenes. Like <laughs> Right. That's so yeah. cool. So like talk about like if someone were to onboard with you, like an individual entrepreneur or like a group, like how, how do they go about connecting with you? Yeah. So the easiest way to connect with me is through the website, which it's the PMO boss. Um, dot com. But I have a community for uh, individuals. So you can come into um, we do a bunch of uh, trainings, like there's some content and modules that you can get some basic education on. And then there's office hours and monthly Q and A's where we look at things that could be specific use cases. We talk about some different prop engineering where they can get coaching around how to improve what they're trying to do. Um, so that's just a, it's a, like a monthly thing where we have regular opportunities to meet and discuss, and then I'll post different information that is relevant to what's going on in the news. Um, so that that's, I think the best position for individuals because we try to stay current, right? Like we're mm -hmm. constantly connecting on what's happening and what is the kind of their specific needs. Um, and then for any company that is interested in doing a training, um, they can, you know, book a call and we go through exactly what they're looking for. And we offer a couple of different programs um, to kind of right size it for their teams. And then their teams actually get invited into the community as well. So if you are like, if you are a company that brings us on, um, they can get the continuing education um and access through the community by by doing the corporate event so it's a nice little tie in there <laughs> so awesome. cool. I love that you have a community because I think mm -hmm. um the community like being around other people it just really helps you like feeling like you're not alone and stuff and other people are you know you kind of ha have mm -hmm. somebody like similar to make the journey with I think that's very encouraging and powerful I love that you have a community what platform yeah. do you use mm -hmm. Oh, what was that? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, school. So okay, I'm on okay. School. Yeah, jumping on school. Uh, we're we're growing, right? We're tiny right now. Um, but I don't know if you guys are familiar familiar yeah. with Alex yeah. Ramosi and his investment. Like he's a, a yeah. For anyone in your audience that doesn't know, he's like a very uh popular digital marketer. Uh, he yeah. like heavily invested in school, and it's kind of blow it's blowing up right now as a platform. What after his uh involvement. <laughs> awesome. So oh, yeah. I'm grateful for that. I'm on there, but I'm in that space where I've been like, you know, just all of these things are, all of these things are like going on at the same time and you kind of mm -hmm. feel like, oh my God, but I am on there. I have not been on there like to really like look around. Yeah. Awesome yeah. Uh, it could get overwhelming sometimes because there's so much coming out and just, yeah. you got to kind of find out what's going to gel with your own niche and your own biz business and and just stay the course and kind of be consistent with what you're going to be using I, in my opinion I don't know would you agree with that Laura 
Kind of. I think, you know, we're at this time, right? Information is so available. Um, I do actually sometimes find myself overwhelmed with freebies and this webinar and that and uh, like read this yes. thing. And um, I want all of them because I'm trying to learn everything. But at the same yeah. time, there is a little bit of like whose information is good, right? And it's right. that kind of stuff. Um, and I have even as a business owner been messing around with different platforms. Like I was jumping around to different things in the back end um, and landed on school. So like, I don't want to say it was wasting time because it really isn't. It's learning. Um, I know but you mean, though. Yeah. Like it slows you down. I'm like, okay, well, I don't really like this platform and I just spent money on it. And now I'm like, eh. yeah. <laughs> um, so there's, there's definitely an element of, uh, yeah. What do I actually want this to look like? And what do I like? And the overwhelming amount of products. Um, but that's, I guess, just the nature of the beast. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, can, can, um, can you tell us like tell the our audience like where can, they can find you your social media and stuff how can they yeah, connect so, with you so the website again it's the pmoboss.com um and again original pmo stands for project management office which was kind of my original endeavor so that's uh maybe your rebrand will come up at some point but that's our our website for right now yeah. um and then we're most um active on linkedin which is also under the pmo boss and um i do have a page on facebook uh as well but yeah, the beautiful. website is where i have some of my freebies and information about the um there's a free uh, master class about ai that um teaches you about the community oh, i love so, it um, a big shout out to you for doing that or, or bringing like an ethical energy to that mm -hmm. space because it is scary for a lot of people. It's new, it's constantly changing and it can feel like you're drinking from a fire hose sometimes. It's like it's so much coming at you. Um, if you can, if you can give like your advice to somebody that's just starting out or somebody that's kind of like on the fence about starting their own business or even just kind of like growing within their mm -hmm. own organization or whatever, like what would you kind of drop for them? Yeah, probably two things. Is one, you just do it, right? You are better off learning something than not learning something like if anything you'll learn you don't like it so whatever that skill is whatever that thing is just just dip your toe in and figure it out um if you are looking to jump into a business i think the one thing um that i would kind of recommend is to if you're doing like the working full time and deciding when to make that jump is to just make sure you have a clear idea of what you want to do spend your time while you're double dipping to get really clear on what you want to offer um, so that when you do hit the ground, it's, you know, uh, I don't want to say I stumbled because again, it's always, it's been learnings, right? They're not failures, it's lessons. Um, but I definitely pivoted a couple of times where in hindsight, I'm like, oh, that would have been better to have known before I ran out of my regular income. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, you work with it, you figure it out, you keep going. Um, but I just think there's just nothing wrong with learning new skills and, um, Coaches, coaches is another really big thing. I've, I've went through um, a lot of like programs and mentors and uh, doing this to expedite my skills so that I can have this life I want faster. Thank so you. Cool. I, would, I would add to that, bet your coaches and skills. Yes. <laughs> I mean, your coaches and yeah. um, mentors. Bet that Because I had, a, it's just, yeah, I've, I've done the same thing. <laughs> kind of everybody is not as ethical as you would like them to be. And so I think that kind of, um discourages a lot of people you know what I mean because you don't really know what you're doing but you're so awesome for walking people through that girl thank you yeah. so much Laura. yeah thank yeah. you guys for having me this has been yeah, wonderful yeah we <laughs> hope to have you back maybe sort of for updates later on but thank you so much for coming on with us you dropped a lot of gems for us it was great thank you so much all right thank you guys <laughs> for watching bye y'all bye